Hey, what's up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today we are filming my intro in the car. In today's video, we are finally setting up my sewing slash craft slash filming room. Basically, long story short, maybe two years ago now, we decided to redo our basement, which included redoing the floor, shiplapping the walls, and all of that jazz. Unfortunately, after I filmed that entire process to then get ready to set up all my sewing stuff, our basement flooded within three months, um, twice. That did not end up happening. And that was entirely scrapped. And everything has been basically sitting in boxes just waiting to be set up. Now that we have three cats, we kind of decided that the guest room should probably no longer be the cat room. Just because, I mean, one, we didn't really have a need for the bed in there because nobody stays in our house. And also, the cats don't need the guest bedroom. They can have the entire basement, which is a much larger room for all of their stuff. Plus I could get them more stuff because I like to spoil my cats. That's basically a long winded way to explain that I'm moving all of my sewing stuff from the basement upstairs and all of the cat stuff from upstairs to the basement. Yeah, so that's what we're doing in today's video. If you'd like to continue to see this process, stay tuned because we're gonna get into that right now. So first things first, we have to get a good look at the before. As you can see, this room, now that the bed was removed, has basically been storage for literally anything, including our cat stuff. We removed the TV stand from the middle of the room and then obviously jumped right into building furniture to take up the space that we just created. First thing we decided to set up was my desk. It took a bit for me to decide exactly what type of desk I wanted because I have one currently for my computer that I got from Amazon that... It's definitely been doing its job, but it's just not the most ideal desk in my opinion. Basically, I kind of wanted something I could sit at, but also stand at. So my solution was to get a standing desk. This one I got was fairly cheap. I think I'm not really quite sure how expensive standing desks tend to go for, but it's automatic, meaning it plugs into the wall to control the height of the table. So I don't have to screw anything manually myself, which is very nice. At least this way when I am cutting fabric or if I want to stand while I'm doing something, I can and I don't have to sacrifice my back in the process. Thankfully, Mark was able to help me put this together as when it comes to certain things such as this desk that's going to be holding things like my laptop or my sewing machines, it definitely needs to be built properly and sturdily because the last thing I would like is for it to all fall apart while I'm filming a video, that would be actually the most embarrassing thing. Now that the desk is built, it is time to move on to the next project. It's a new day, and behind me, we are gonna do a little DIY today. This is a lovely metal cabinet that I thrifted for probably about $8 this time last year. Um, I did get it at like the end of the summer when we started living here. And I had plans of sanding it down and repainting it which we attempted to do at the bottom, but sanding this thing is a bitch. That's like the easiest way to put it. Instead, I bought contact paper. I've already scrubbed this cabinet twice, once with Clorox wipes and then again with 409. So it is as clean as it's going to get. And we're gonna wrap it and then fill it up with my fabric. Just a quick little inside, as you can see the shelves, like they're not dirty anymore, which is good, but there's some wear, lots of wear. I have some Amazon boxes I need to open and figure out what is my wrap. Oh, this feels like wallpaper. This might be a little bit better quality than I anticipated, honestly. This is kind of what it looks like. Let's get some hardware off and then we'll start to wrap this. So the hardware is officially off the cabinets. They're here. I'm not, I'm not doing anything with these. They're going to stay the same. As for this, thankfully, okay. Thankfully, each door is bigger than the wrap itself, so I don't have to cut and hodgepodge anything together. And now we'll commence me attempting to, on eight times speed, wrap this cabinet. Some tips. I definitely would not start at the top, and I definitely, I think, stop and say that at some point, but starting at the top, how I did at first, was causing wrinkles. So just get a card, 
and smooth them out. Okay, now that I have like about a third-ish, maybe a little bit more than almost half of the door wrapped, I just wanted to show. I actually ended up lifting this top lip off because it was creating a lot of creases and air bubbles as you can see right in here. So right here is where the door opens. So I'm gonna worry about wrapping that all that after. Oh, shadow boo. I caught her, baby. Anyways, so I'm gonna keep smoothing it down. I just wanted to show it's very smooth. The print is beautiful. It's very pretty. Yeah, I thought I said that. Anyways, using my Costco card or really any type of hard card or gift card, maybe your ID, is gonna be important because it's gonna be a lot more easier for you to get that smooth look. And then once I got to the bottom of the door, I just cut across, wrap the edges, and smooth it out. So one door is officially wrapped all the way to there. Um, I was debating on if I wanted to do the full body of this cabinet, like the sides and stuff. And I honestly don't think I'm going to because it's not really dirty or anything. And like, kind of like the idea of just the front shelves being it. So I'm gonna do the other door. But before I do that, I'm gonna put the handles on this one. Okay, wait. Oh my God. Stop. Okay, I'm actually really obsessed with how this looks right now and it's not even halfway done. Like, wow. I took the opportunity to wrap the bottom because the bottom of this was absolutely disgusting and not bad. It could be better. I have this piece ready to go. It's only going to cover half of it, so I do have to cover this little half. That's fine. Because this is better than this. Or that. Now that half of the shelf is done, I'm gonna do the rest. And next time you see me, I'm gonna be filling this thing. It is a new day. The Cabinet is fully wrapped. So now our cabinet is fully wrapped. It is time for me to start filling it up with fabric. So this is what we are looking at in terms of fabric. Um, this is definitely not all of my fabrics. I have another bucket downstairs that I have to still bring up. It is not like just fabric. It's fabric underneath a bunch of supplies. So for now, here we are, I can see everything. I tried my best to put like lightweight fabrics, like weird, like this really shiny fabric that's like thin and see-through. I got like some black stretchy fabric. Embroidered or eyelet type things. Like this is all embroidered, which is very pretty. Character fabric, florals that are kind of not stretchy at all whatsoever. Cottons for the most part. This is dead stock, this is so pretty. And then my thicker fabrics and I have a lot more corduroy to find. I have like purple and brown, but, but that's in my other bucket that I still have to find. So for now, she looks good and the doors do shut, which is good. Cause now all my fabric is in there and no one will know. So this is the closet. I have a contraption shelving unit to go on this door, but I am not going to do that right now. I actually instead have these really awesome acrylic, um, they're like supposed to be magazine holders or like just holders of things in general, but they are also magnetic. So if I did really want to, I could just stick it to my cabinet, but I'm not going to do that. So I have my nano tape. I'm going to just nano tape these up. I used this to stick my stained glass to the wall downstairs and it did a really good job at holding. So I'm gonna use this. I bought these with the intention of displaying my sewing patterns as well as I like two vintage sewing magazines that I had gotten as a gift. So I wanna put those up as well. One thing I really like about these is how uniform it looks on my wall once they are all put up. And since I have some space on the other side of this wall because of the closet sticking out, I do think I want to get more 
to display even more of my patterns because each one only really holds two to three patterns max. But it does look good. I found a few of my sewing patterns, at least to get this started, and then I'll probably finish this when I get everything else up here. But to start, these are some of my vintage sewing magazines. These two are from 1968, and I think this one. Um, this one doesn't have a date, but this one says it's copyrighted it from 1938, so... And I'm gonna put them up at the top, because it's not really like... I will be re referencing them. Oh, yes! Wait, this is actually perfect. Stop. I gotta take a step back and look. Yes. I just actually went to the thrift store, so I thrifted my thrift store. I got so lucky had actually a ridiculous amount of vintage sewing patterns. Some of these might not be vintage, but some of these definitely are. Um, the one I'm most excited about is this last one. Hold on. I'm most excited about this one. This is a pattern to make short set of one yard of fabric. And they're really cute. So happy about that. I think I would like to have some sort of method though to organizing this. So for now, I think I will just do like, keep my magazines obviously at the top. Or like jackets, dresses, tops, bottoms, miscellaneous? Because I do have some that are miscellaneous. Or maybe I'll put miscellaneous in the next. There'll be a method eventually. I'm going to place these where I feel like now. Um, for some reason I can't find one of the sewing patterns that I literally had my hands on the other day. But I have some more. Some cargo pants bottoms. This one's really cool. I've never used it before. It's like to make a fairy dollhouse. I figured I could use this to make some cat houses. And then another jumper. So this is what we have. So far, I think it looks awesome. I love it. And it makes me wanna buy more of them because I have so many more patterns. Now is time for the last thing I have to kind of put together for now. This is a over the closet uh, organizer thing. This is typically for pantries and stuff like that, but I bought it with the intention of putting things like my paints and other art items that I do have on it. It was fairly simple to set up. I just had to screw these rails all together and then hook them on the door and then hook the shelves onto the hooks on the rails. Pretty simple to put together. And this is what it ends up looking like once I am all done. I'm not really 100% with the spacing, but for now it is good. And it did come with some nano tape to secure it to the door. So I very excitedly did that because Nothing is more annoying than it swinging when you open and shut a door. And that is all for today's video. This is definitely part one, obviously, because it is not done. And I do not want this video to be an hour or longer because I have a lot of stuff to get through. For now, we will leave this at part one. I think part two will be more actually decorating and maybe a few things here or there for my organization. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a comment, subscribe, turn those notifications on so you can see when I post the next one. And as always, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.